Now, the pandemic may also put, be putting democracy and rule of law under strain. Case in point, Hungary. Last week, the government asked to rule by decree indefinitely to handle this pandemic, and Parliament approved it. The law contains no time limit. Prime Minister Viktor Orban says that he'll use the extraordinary powers proportionately. But opposition lawmakers say it puts the whole of Hungarian democracy in quarantine. And today, the government further announced that the current lockdown will be extended indefinitely and revisited weekly. Joining me now to discuss all of this is Foreign Minister Peter Siato. Welcome to the program, Mr. Foreign Minister. We've spoken many times before about these issues, and I'm just wondering, what you make of, for instance, the headline says, you know, has coronavirus killed off its first democracy? Talking about yours. Well, uh, good uh, evening to you. I'm very happy to uh, talk to you uh, now again, although I regret that we cannot meet uh, personally. Hopefully, uh, this uh, crazy situation uh, will be uh, over uh, in a for short, foreseeable uh, time and we will have the chance to talk to each other personally again and I, I really appreciate this opportunity uh, to talk to you because I see that there are many fake news and the lies uh, spread uh, about Hungary out there based on this uh, new law. I understand that um, uh, many uh, of these um, reports about us uh, emphasize that there is no time limit in the law, which is not entirely true given the fact that the law says that it is the parliament itself which can conclude the uh, state of danger. I cannot uh, imagine, to be honest, uh, a more democratic solution for that than giving this right uh, to the parliament itself, which has the democratic authorization from the people. On the other hand, uh, I have to tell you that uh, I read these reports and I regret that uh, uh, these reports uh, never uh, speak about the truth in its entirety, given the fact that there are four countries in the European Union applying a similar kind of uh, solution. Poland, Malta, Croatia and us. And there are four other countries in which the uh, government can prolong the state of emergency or a state of danger without uh, any kind of uh, decision uh, made by the uh, parliament. So I don't, I don't think that there is anybody uh, who would be able to say what time this uh, epidemic, what time uh, uh, the virus challenge is going to be over. So I think the good solution is that we gave this uh, right to the parliament to make a decision uh, when they think that this uh, state of danger should be concluded. Right. Now, Foreign Minister Siato, uh, as you know, we don't engage in fake news, so there's just no point in even using that term when talking to me. This is what your parliament has done, and you have an indefinite, indefinite rule by decree. And as you very well know, Sure, you can say, theoretically, the parliament can change this, but the parliament is two-thirds majority of your party and your party's allies, the ruling Fidesz party and its allies. Really? The parliament is going to go against Viktor Orban? You just tell me if, if you think that's even possible. You know, first of all, the uh, composition uh, of, the of the parliament is not an outcome of a lottery, but uh, elections. So uh, I think it's a kind of natural that in a parliament there is a majority and there is a minority. And the majority is definitely uh, for uh, the uh, government. On the, on the other hand, yes, there are many fake news uh, spread uh, about uh, Hungary in this regard, unfortunately. I spoke about this term uh, generally. Many uh, media outlets uh, have uh, spread uh, lies and fake news uh, around uh, this law. One of these fake news is that it says that the government has an uncontrolled and an unlimited possibility to make decrees, which is not true. The uh, law says very clearly that we can make decrees only in accordance with protecting the country, the people and the economy from the uh, challenges related to the um, virus. And we definitely have to make such kind of decisions, but we are not the only one. All countries in the world, I guess, make that. And just uh, for the sake of, uh, of comparison, I have to tell you that uh, the rights which have now been given to the Hungarian Prime Minister and the government by the parliament are much narrower 
than the rights, um, for example, given to the uh, president of France under normal circumstances. So portraying this situation as if it was a threat to democracy is simply unfair, I have to be honest with you. Mr. Foreign Minister, the French National Assembly, its parliament is still functioning. The British parliament is still functioning. Yes, it's in recess for Easter. The United States Congress is still functioning. Your parliament is not. Your parliament is closed down. So that's a big, big difference. And then you say that all other democracies and other countries are doing this in Europe as well. Well, let me, let me just ask you about Norway. As you know, Norwegian Prime Minister would have liked to have had emergency powers. She asked for them till December 31st for the rest of this year in order to deal with this crisis. But her parliament said no, and they gave her one month's emergency powers. Again, I want to know, when do you think that your emergency powers are going to be lifted, this rule by decree, and exactly what do you need these powers for that you couldn't enact whatever measures you need to to control the pandemic with this massive majority that you have in Parliament? You know, Mr. Samanpour, I really respect you a lot personally, and um, if I can um, make it more personal, I can tell you that I really enjoy the personal uh, meeting with, with you, and I really enjoy the programs you have on CNN, and I uh, try to be a frequent viewer of that. But now you have been engaged in spreading another fake news about Hungary, to, sorry to say, because you just said that the parliament is blocked in Hungary, which is not true. The parliament is in session. For example, this week, the parliament was in session for okay, three well, that's days. News. I myself gave a report. Yeah, yeah. I myself gave a, gave a report in the parliament about the last week's session of the NATO foreign ministers, about the last uh, week's session of the EU foreign minister. Mm -hmm. I myself spoke five times in the plenary session only this week, and I, take, and I took part on the meeting of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Next week, the parliament will have another two-day session, and this is going to be the situation until the 30th of June. This is the normal okay. schedule of the Hungarian are... parliament that we start. The, that we start yeah, that, that, but, but you know, you say, okay, but the, but the thing is, that uh, I don't, to be honest, well, I this don't is really news to us, so I'm accepting, media. I'm accepting but, but that you can, are giving us this be, news. But again, this I a, need to ask you, sorry, yeah, this, is a fact. this is selective this is a fact. choosing. Fine, but let me ask you something. What measures to control the pandemic are you unable to have, given your massive government and parliamentary majority? And does, for instance, deciding not to recognize tra transgender rights, which has just happened, fall into these emergency powers that you need to deal with the pandemic? This is why people are worried about what you're doing, because they think that you're using this crisis to continue the march towards authoritarian rule by decree in your country. This is not new. It didn't just happen now. So answer that. Uh Mr. Foreign Minister. So, yeah, 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 sure, sure. I try my best, believe me. So, um, this week, we have submitted 16 draft laws to the parliament, totally independent from the uh, epidemic situation. So, you have, to, you, uh, you have to separate things into two parts. First, the measures regarding the fight against the virus. There, we have the right to make decrees, as many other countries have decided to do so, because their speed matters. You don't have two weeks um, for the parliament to make a law. You have to act immediately. This is one. On the other hand, when it comes to laws which have nothing to do with the virus situation, they go in a normal schedule in the parliament. The one you refer to is, has been on the table of, of the parliament for more than three weeks now, totally independently from the virus. So decrees in accordance uh, with the virus can be made, and laws which have nothing to do with the virus, they go in the normal schedule in the parliament. This is the normal way how the Hungarian mm -hmm. parliamentarian democracy works. Um, let me just put down uh, this soundbite from the head of the uh, European Commission. You are a member of the EU. This is what the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said just after this decree was approved by Parliament. Take a listen. I understand that member states may need to take uh, emergency measures to address the immediate health crisis. But I am concerned that certain measures go too far. 
and I'm particularly concerned with the situation in Hungary. Uh, what do you make of that? She's concerned, and a lot of people are concerned. Look, I respect um, uh, the uh, president of the European Commission a lot as well. I know her um, because personally as well, because as a minister of uh, federal minister of uh, of defense of, of Germany, we had many uh, uh, interactions. So, with all my personal respect to her, uh, I totally disagree uh, with this statement. And why I do that? Because the European Commission in the European Union is the guardian of the treaties. So the European Commission is entitled to make kind of investigations about the measures um, countries are making, whether they are in line uh, with the European uh, uh, treaties or not. A any kind of investigation have not been concluded yet, so uh, making a prejudice about the outcome of possible future investigations, to be honest, it's not fair. And on the other hand, you know, what I totally okay. reject is double standards. Because now we again speak about Hungary. But once again, I have to tell you, there are three other countries in the European Union, Poland, Malta, Croatia, all our friends, uh, who have no time limit in their regulations. And four other countries, Estonia, Italy, Slovakia, and Slovenia, where the prolongation of such a situation can be based exclusively on the decision of the government without having the approval of the parliament. So why Hungary again? These kind of double standards, I think, should be left aside, especially under okay. the current virus situation. Let me tell you one thing. We, ha we, had the, we had the meeting of the Foreign Affairs Council, which is the gathering of the EU foreign ministers. And I told my colleagues that I understand everything. I, I do not understand one thing. We are now fighting with a huge challenge. Thousands of European citizens are dying on a daily basis. Tens of thousands of citizens are being infected on a daily basis. My question is how Norwegian, uh, who are not members of European Union, but Danish, Finnish, Dutch, uh, Italian, Greek, other politicians do have time to deal with such a very important question, who concludes the state of danger in Hungary, instead of dealing uh, with their internal situation well, to help because, the people because in they need have used their democratic the virus. Process. That's my question. Mostly, mostly the answer is just like we are using, just like process, we are using the democratic. They have used their democratic process, democratic process to bring process the curve well. down and to like we did. start to end the lockdown. Like we did. And let me ask you this: presumably, you would agree that President Trump and the Trump administration are allies and friends. Yes. Yes. Yeah, of course we are. No question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question. Fine. Your, your counterpart in the United States, Secretary of State Michael Pompeo, has said about this, there will be bad actors who try to use this outbreak of virus for nefarious ends. You know, I hear people saying, boy, autocracies sure respond to crises well. Well, I have to tell you, they got the wrong end of the stick. It's democracies that respond to crisis well. They protect liberty, they protect freedom. So what again is your answer to this? Did he mention Hungary in his statement? Yes, absolutely. Specifically, specifically asked about can you a quote power grab by can you the quote Hungarian that when he Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm reading it to you. I have read this statement. No, no, no. I, I but yeah, but but there's no no mentioning about Hungary there. But anyway, I agree. I agree with the. Uh, he was with my asked about uh, power I, grabs uh, like a... that of the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. That's what he was asked about. That was the answer yeah, he was, to the question. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but this was the question and not the answer. But anyway, I, don't, I, uh, I would like to answer substantially what you I have just uh, uh, asked me. So I have a personal, re yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a personal respect to, uh, to Mike, of course, and uh, I'm very happy to work uh, together with him. And I agree with him. Democracy is the best uh, answer for that. And believe me, the uh, solution we have uh, chosen uh, here in Hungary is democratic one. I cannot do anything with the fact that uh, the other uh, part of, or, or um, let's say the uh, external uh, actors do not have a 100% wisdom uh, about this regulation. Just like you didn't have a 100% wisdom because you just sat here a couple I mean, to go to your, to your viewers, that the Hungarian parliament is blocked, which is totally untrue. Others say that we have an unlimited um, uh, possibility to, to make regular... Yeah, uh, 
You said that they are, you said the Hungarian parliament is not in session, which is totally untrue because it is in session. And, right. uh, and others say, you know, that we have an un unlimited possibility of making decrease, which is not true either. Okay. Look, the law is All not right. long. It's, le it's, it's less, than, sorry, it's, sorry, it's less than three pages. So I think it's not too challenging to read that. So I would like to ask everybody who makes such kind of harsh statements on Hungary to read the law. First read and then make statement. And then it makes sense to uh, speak about this issue afterwards, I guess. Righty-ho. Well, we, we asked you for your response to all of this and you've given it to us. So Foreign Minister Siato, thank you for joining us from Budapest.